I'm supposed to do that right now. All right. Are we live? Okay, good. Give me guys some time. Hold on. Can y'all hear my stuff on? All right, I'm back. <laughs> All right. Happy, happy Monday. All right. How y'all doing today? All right, guys. Hello. We are here for our rescheduled. I'm so sorry. Our rescheduled live and clicks maternity review. All right. We're going to go over all the things that you need to know or you need to review, brush up on, whatever, in order for you to pass and do well in um, maternity, both the course and whatever maternity questions you get on NCLEX. Okay. Don't let, don't let maternity fool you. Okay. <laughs> don't let it get you got. All right, so who's all taking um, maternity this semester? Maybe next semester? I'm not sure, but who's all taking maternity right now? Uh, Dipped Barina said, um, you're saying, oh, your final tomorrow. Ooh, 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 great. So you definitely are going to want to be here. Happy Monday, Nursing Your Career. Future nurse um, niche starts it next week. Um, next semester for you. Awesome. All right, so... This is going to be a live maternity review. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up our stuff. First of all, are you guys signed up and registered for um, this week of back to nursing school? If you signed up at all to back to nursing school, then you don't need to sign up again. But if you have not signed up at all, this is your last week. All right, and during this last week, we're going to be focusing on clearly maternity. So I don't want you guys to miss out on that. All right, just took it here. 95 percent. Whoop, whoop. All right, awesome. I get an extra three days to study for this exam. Hurricane Ian gave me a grace period. Awesome, awesome sauce. All right, so one of the biggest things um, I'm going to ask you guys, all right, while we do our maternity review, first of all, this is going to go, this is going to be so much easier for you if you have the maternity study kit our maternity study kit. Do you guys have it? Yes or no? Kind of let me know. What is on my nose? Oh, this water. Let me know if you have the maternity study kit because if you do not, you really need it. I strongly suggest it, okay? Everything that we're about to go over is basically in that study kit, okay? And those are the main, like, commonly tested concepts and topics within maternity. Of course, you know, you have other things, like your one-offs, your outliers, and stuff like that. But the main things that they're definitely going to be um, assessing your comprehension on, we're going to go over. And it's also um, in a little bit more detail in the study kit. Okay, now for any study kit, whether it's mine or someone else's, use your study kits supplementally, all right, which, which means along with <laughs> your textbook, okay, your booked, <laughs> your textbook, okay. Um, the study kit, study guide is supposed to cut out all the fluff that's used to fill up these textbooks. Okay, you're not going to be tested on every word. And one of the biggest study tips that I can that I can give you guys is not to A, try to memorize anything. And B, if you are going to try to memorize, don't try to memorize the whole maternity book. <laughs> okay, or the maternity chapter. It's not going to do you well. It's not going to do you well at all. Okay, so you need to know and you need to learn what things to focus on with things not to focus on which is why we're having this live review right now okay those same things like I said are going to be detailed within the maternity study kit you can get that by itself you can get that a part of the third semester bundle or you can get it a part of the ultimate nursing school um, bundle okay do not get the third semester and the ultimate nursing school bundle all in one it's you because you are buying the same thing if you get the ultimate nursing school bundle it encompasses Everything in the first semester, second semester, and third semester bundle. All right, it's over 400 pages, and it includes the maternity study kit. Okay. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Wait, let me go ahead and go through this stuff. 
Now, any, anyone that signed up for the free um, back to nursing school kind of week four thing, we're going to be going over, like I said, the, the main topics. Um, this specific live, I want to make sure we're catching up on um, the things from uh, the newsletter that I sent you guys. Okay? Um, let me see what y'all saying. Let me say about the minute and I got to put this in that cuz. Ooh! Kylie said she got a B plus. Ooh, hold on. Mm. Take a screenshot. Take a screenshot of that one. Congratulations. Whoop, whoop. Awesome job. All right. Um, <clears throat> let me go ahead and go towards our thing. All right, guys. Let's go ahead and start. I hope y'all have like a piece of paper, something to take these notes on because I'm going to be talking, um, um, trying to make sure that we use this hour to great use. All right. If you know anyone that needs to be in on this live that's about to study or is currently studying maternity, please tag him so they do not miss this. All right. There will be a replay, but the only, um, the only people that can access the replay are going to be the people that subscribe to my Instagram. All right. So any type of um, Instagram replay, whether it's NCLEX Jeopardy, Tease Tuesday, whatever, you'll be able to have um, access to that or instant access to those replays from this point on when you subscribe to our page. All right. It is only $2.99 for the introductory price. Um, and then after that, it goes up. But if you sign up with the intro introductory price, you're locked in on that price for the $2.99. Okay. So make sure you guys are taking notes. All right, let me see what y'all saying. Can't say today, but still thank for you. Ooh -hoo. All right, awesome. I'm glad you're taking notes. All right, thank you, Nova Kane. That's fine. All right, let's go ahead and get studied. Um, uh, started. All right, so maternity nursing. Let's bring up my. I had to get a new computer, y'all. I had to get a new computer. Mine was on the fritz. All right, let's start with our um. Our basics our basic maternity concepts okay so I'm gonna list the things that you guys definitely need to study and definitely need to go over and then we're gonna go over them um, one by one okay I'm gonna give you guys like I said I'm gonna cut the fluff and give you guys the basic things that you definitely need to know in order to do it all right also going to kind of get you guys um, give you an almost like a demonstration of your homework as far as the back to nursing school for our maternity week, you're supposed to be making a drug card, right? All y'all that signed up, you're supposed to be making a drug card um, using any maternity med. <clears throat> but we'll be going over that. But for now, let's go over our basics. And... No, not that one. Not that one. Bring up your, okay, here we go. All right, so bring up your um, planners, not your planners, I'm sorry. Bring up your newsletters and also bring up your maternity uh, kits. All right, here we go. All right, so underneath these lesson plans, let me see what y'all saying. All right, good. Underneath the lesson plans in your news newsletter, um, we have those daily topics, all right? And I put those daily topics, A, so y'all can see that either you're gonna get some type of content from at least one of those topics via Instagram, email, whatever source for you guys to, um, to get exposed to that information. First things first, our basic maternity concepts, we have, y'all writing this down, right? We have, you need to know the basic female reproduction system. Like you know your anatomy, know your um, uh, physiology, know the functions of the different parts of the female reproductive system, know I'm sorry, two seconds. Okay, man. Yeah, so yeah, female um, reproductive system. Know the anatomy, um, know the function of those different um, pieces of that puzzle, okay? Know your, uh, know the menstrual cycle and know the phases within the menstrual cycle. Um, know uh, 
the function of the placenta, um, no fertilization, implantation, no how you make a baby, all right? And it's not when two people love each other and they come together, <laughs> okay? No, the steps of um, fertilization and implantation and how that happens. And then also know the, your fetal development milestones, okay? Now let's stop there and kind of dive into that just a little bit more. All right, now, as far as your menstrual cycle, no, I'm sorry, as far as the female reproductive system, okay. Oh, where's my pillow? Oh, dang it. Oh, wait, no, that's not it. Darn, I thought that was it. Uh, stop. Okay, wait. Okay, sorry. All right, so... <laughs> This is our pillow, all right? This is, I forgot her name was, Ava, Oba, something like that. Um, this is our, what is this? <laughs> this is a picture of our, um, our figure of our uterus, all right? This is our female reproductive system. And it consists of, all right, the uterus. Pretend this little face right here is the uterus, okay? This is what houses the baby, houses the fetus, all that good stuff. This is the house, it's the home base. All right. Now the um, uterus is. Um, <laughs> I so need that PCOS. Right. I, this is why I got it for PCOS, and it's PCOS Awareness Month. Boop boop boop. Um, but yes. So the uterus is lined on the inside with um, something called the endometrium. All right. That's the innermost layer of the uterus. All right. That is <laughs> where most of our problems start, as far as endometriosis. Um, and little tip. If you are an unlucky person like me and you get a form of endometriosis that's not within this is this looks like heart it does but it's not <laughs> um, if you get a form of endometriosis that is not um, within the lining of the um, uterus it's actually within the walls of the uterus okay that is called adenomyosis not endometriosis adenomyosis okay um, this right here <laughs> is the, uh, well, this is the vagina, honestly. This is the vagina, and then right here, like kind of that cuff, is called the cervix, all right? That's what they scrape up against when they take it, <laughs> when they're doing like pap smears and stuff. But this is like your vagina. This is the, the tunnel. Did I just do that? I did. I'm going to get blocked, I swear. <laughs> but this is the entryway um, to the vagina, okay? The, you can think of like um, the cervix as like the door to the club slash the bouncer. <laughs> all right, you can't get up in here until you go through the bouncer. All right, you don't want you don't want nothing to go through that bouncer. All right, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> um, but yes, uterus, cervix, vagina. All right, lining of the uterus is your endometriosis. I mean the endometrium. All right, now attached here, okay, we're gonna go into these little pigtail type things, but they're not pigtails. These little tubes are called fallopian tubes, okay, fallopian tubes. This, or both of these, these are ovaries, okay? These ovaries produce eggs called ova, or ovum if it's plural, but yes, uterus, fallopian tubes, you got two of them, attached to two ovaries one each okay now um as far as your ovaries go you can't see here obviously but make sure you know that there are three layers to the ovaries all right just like um well i'm gonna say what the layers are medulla uh cortex and the tunica those are the three layers of, of the ovaries now when, when it comes to like layers period with layers of you know, kidney layers, um, gland layers. For some reason, it's always like medulla and cortex. So whenever I see those words, I, I don't know what they mean, but whenever I see medulla cortex, I'm like, okay, what layer is this? Are we talking about now? But yeah, the three layers of the ovaries is medulla, uh, um, cortex, and tunica, okay? And you have like I said, two ovaries attached to um, two fallopian tubes, which is attached to the uterus, attached to the cervix slash vagina, all right? 
question where does of the figures of the figures that i just talked about but ovary fallopian tube uterus cervix vagina of those five which one um is where fertilization occurs you need to know this where does fertilization recur occur in the female reproductive system where does female reproduction occur all messed up i'm sorry <laughs> yes where does female fertilization occur female fertilization does this have it here okay correct fallopian tube some people are saying ovaries, but no, that is not where fertilization occurs. Fertilization occurs actually in the fallopian tubes, okay? Make sure you know that. I, I remember I remember that question specifically, which is why I put it in the study kit as well. If, you, if it got me, it's not gonna, A, it's not going to get me again, and B, it's not going to get you if I can help it, okay? So fertilization occurs in the fallopian tubes. F for F, trying to remember that. F for fertilization occurs in the F fallopian tube. Okay? All right. One second. What else? So that's everything you need to know for that. Menstrual cycle. Let's get into the menstrual cycle. All right? Um, that is our the bleeding of the uterus. All right? Due to... Um, hormonal changes and due to the shedding of the lining of the uterus the endometrial I keep saying endometriosis the endometrium all right that lining is shedding just like a you know, like okay just like a snake kind of sheds their old skins this is the old cells <laughs> um, and the old lining shedding and making new lining okay and that shedding results in us bleeding for well you normal folks <laughs> you normal women ladies bleeding for uh what seven days i think five to seven days i don't know <laughs> um there are four phases of menstruation okay can anybody name one just name one phase Just name one phase. If you can't, that's fine. We're going to go through it. Does anybody know one phase? One phase. One phase of menstruation, of the menstrual cycle. Secretary phase, a.k.a. the luteal phase. Yes. All right. So phase one is the follicular phase. All right, also called the proliferative phase. All right, that's um, increased FSH or the follicle stimulating hormone. Okay, and estrogen is secreted in that phase. All right, phase two is ovulation, follicle releases a ripe egg. Um, another question. Okay, I said it before, let me see what, make sure you guys are um, retaining and comprehending. Where are the, oh, uh, the eggs? I almost, almost messed up. Where are the eggs? <laughs> made where are eggs produced um in the female reproductive system where are eggs produced in the female reproductive system ovaries absolutely all right so follicle releases a ripe egg from the ovaries that's ovulation from the ovaries okay that's phase two phase three is um just like who said it first uh um, LL, aka First Lady. I, I knew what you meant. Secretary, not secretary, not Monica Lewinsky, not that. <laughs> um, was she a secretary? I don't know. Anyway, um, the secretory, secretory, all right, secretory phase, aka the luteal phase. That is when the follicle becomes the corpus luteum or sent to the corpus luteum and progesterone is made during this phase. All right. Um, this phase is now there's timing of these different phases as well. Um, so let me go back to it. The first phase, follicular phase or the proliferative. 
all right? That phase is uh, days five through 13 of a 28 day cycle, okay? Phase two, ovulation, follicle releases ripe eggs from the ovaries, that is day 14, okay? Uh, phase three, the luteal phase slash the, the secretory phase, that's when progesterone is made, we just talked about it, that is days 15 through 28, okay? And then at the, well, the last phase, I should say, is menstruation, menstruation, and that is when the endometrium is shed, that lining is shed, um, and that is actually occurring days one through five, okay? So that's the timing of a normal menses on a 28-day cycle. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> All right, so that's what you need to know about menstruation. That's what you need to know. Um, remi remember, this is the main commonly tested things, all right? Not saying that you, never, you do not have to study anything else besides this information, but this is definitely the stuff that you need to hit, okay? So that's female um, reproductive system, the menstrual cycle, where else was on our thing? These are basic maternity concepts. Now let's get into the umbilical cord, all right? This is definitely something that needs to be studied because I see these questions for me doing NCLEX Jeopardy every week and I have been doing that for the past like two years. I see this question on like every... <laughs> Every time I do maternity, I see this one of this um, or this concept. Let me say, let me say that because it's asked in different ways. So this concept um, about the umbilical cord. One second. It is the connection between the placenta and the fetus. Um, the placenta is like that purplish pancake that comes out <laughs> after the baby, um, but the there's something flat if this is the placenta and um this is the baby or the fetus let me say that then okay this is the umbilical cord all right it's going from the placenta <laughs> umbilical cord it's going from the placenta to the fetus Okay, y'all see that? That white cord is the umbilical cord. All right. All right, and this is what you need to know about um, the umbilical cord, like especially. All right, there are arteries and veins. I am not a Leo. I am a Scorpio. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right, there's arteries and veins um, within the umbilical cord. All right. How many arteries... And how many veins does it have? Let me start with the front. How many arteries do the, uh, does the umbilical cord have? How many arteries does the umbilical cord have? Okay now, Ava, I see y'all. Ava, absolutely. Two arteries and one vein. Remember Ava, baby Ava. Baby Ava, all right, A-V-A, -A, artery, vein, artery. There's two A's and one V, two arteries, one V, all right? Now, as far as um, those two arteries, are they taking blood, um, are they taking blood to the fetus or from the fetus? Are those two umbilical cords taking blood to the fetus or taking it away? from the fetus. Waiting for your answers. Is it to the fetus or is it away from the fetus? Nope, it's away. Right, great job um, Soshar, great job Kissy K. It's away. Okay, arteries equals away. Great job, pretty green A, pretty green eyes. A for A. Arteries, that A can stand for away as well. Arteries equals away. Remember it like that. All right. Um, the veins, the art, well, I'm sorry, the vein, the singular because it's one vein. The veins carry um, oxygenated blood to or toward the fetus. 
arteries carried deoxygenated blood away from the fetus. All right. Now, when you think about what, bl what blood you want going to a fetus, all right, what nutrients and blood you want going to a, f um, a fetus, you think you're going to want it deoxygenated so they can't do nothing <laughs> with it? Or do you want to give them oxygenated blood? Deoxygenated blood or oxygenated blood? What's going to be the type of blood that you want going to the fetus? Deoxygenated blood or oxygenated blood? What kind of blood is going to the fetus? Which one? Oxygenated. Absolutely. So for the umbilical cord, those two arteries in baby Ava, those two arteries are taking deoxygenated blood away from the fetus. And that one umbilical vein is taking oxygenated blood to the fetus. Okay? You can remember that um, one vein equals oxygenated. So O, <laughs> the O in one <laughs> can be the O in oxygenated. That's how, or oxygenated blood. That's how I remembered it. And that's how I said to remember it in my study kit. However it works for you. All right. That's just what works for me. All right. Um, here's another thing that's important. That umbilical cord is made up of a substance that protects the veins, the vein and arteries. What is that substance called? The. The umbilical cord is made up of a certain substance that protects the veins and arteries. What is that substance called? I know what you meant, so sharp. What is, well, she didn't say what is, but Wharton's jelly. <laughs> Pretty green eyes said something jelly. Listen, because <laughs> on the end class, especially if it's um, multiple choice, it, something jelly, unless they have like Wharton, strawberry, grape. <laughs> I don't think you're ready for this. Like, I don't know what kind of jelly they gonna have. <laughs> On the actual multiple choice, but it's Wharton's. <laughs> it is Wharton's jelly, not grape, strawberry, uh, tropical fruit, mixed fruit, none of that. Wharton's jelly. <laughs> Something jelly. That's funny. All right, so yes, remember that. The cord is made up of Wharton's jelly, and that is to protect the vein and arteries. Okay? All right. Placenta. This is what you need to know about the placenta. Okay, um, mm -mm -mm, that is the temporary organ between the mother and the fetus. All right, so that so one of the ends of that umbilical cord, remember, it's a, one end is attached to the fetus, the other end is attached to the placenta. Okay, that placenta is that temporary organ from the mother to the fetus. Okay, that's gonna bring all the nutrients um, in and the waste out. Okay. Um, the, uh, what can cross, okay, there's a couple things. There's a few things about the placenta, all right? Um, there are certain things that can and cannot cross, um, that placental barrier, all right? Now, the things that can cross the barrier, that's why they have things like, um, um, dang it, what's it called? Where it's like, pregnancy category, like where, especially like on medications and drugs, um, they ask like what kind of um, category it is. And if it's like category X, it's like harmful to the fetus. If it's like category like A or something like that, it's like, y'all know what I'm talking about? Hold on, now I gotta Google it because I don't just remember it. Drug categories, right? Pregnancy, pregnancy categories. For drugs. Yeah, pregnancy categories for drugs. I wasn't crazy. Right. Pregnancy categories. Okay. Now write this down. Because I'm going to need to write it down. Because I didn't even know what it was called, let alone <laughs> what's on it. All right. So these are the um, FDA pregnancy categories. There are five. A, B, C, D, and X. Okay. A is no fetal risk. 
in controlled stu um, studies, so there's no risk to the to the fetus. B is no risk to the fetus despite possible animal risk or no risk in animal studies, but human studies are lacking. That's B. C is human risk cannot be ruled out and animal studies may or may not show risk. That one's kind of like literally like at your own risk, boo. We haven't really done... <laughs> we haven't really done the evidence like it's not giving us a yes or no so you're getting this eh. um category d it's evidence of risk to the human fetus all right there's there's studies to show that if you if you take this drug or medication there there's a good chance that your baby's gonna be risk i mean at risk um and then x is contraindicated in pregnancy you take this your pregnancy is ending like do not if you do this, then this will happen. That is pregnancy. That is um, category X. Okay, so know those. Now, as far as what things can um, cross the placenta, nutrients. That's the stuff we want want to cross, right? Nutrients, um, hormones, antibodies. Um, that's how we get that maternal like immunity. Um, what we kind of don't want to cross <laughs> drugs, uh, my, well, sometimes drugs, microorganisms, um, waste, those are all things that can cross the barrier. So move with caution. All right. Now, um, there are three hormones produced, um, by the placenta. There are three hormones produced by the placenta, um, estrogen, progesterone, and HCG, human chronic gonadotropin, okay? That is a hormone that is measured whenever you are taking a pregnancy test. Like those at-home pregnancy tests that you go and get two, two, four, however much. Simple response, first response. It's measuring the HCG hormone level within um, your urine, okay? Um, there's another part that y'all definitely need to know, okay? There are two components to the placenta, all right? Let's go back to our example. Let's say this was the placenta, okay? This is your placenta. Um, yeah, let's say that. Okay, let's say this one. This... <laughs> This is um, your placenta, all right? There's two parts, and let's kind of look at it like this. Side A and side B, all right? Now, um, there's a fetal part and the maternal part, all right? So side A is going to be the part that goes to the feet, that faces the fetus or is going towards the fetus. And then side um, B is the maternal side. That's gonna, that's for the mother. All right, so fetus, that's for the mother. All right, now, how you, how you can, okay, there's also two different names for these um, components. Side A, well, I'm not gonna say side A, <laughs> but the side that's the fetal part and the side that's the maternal part. The side that's the fetal part, all right, that one um, is the one that looks like a tree, okay? That tree of life, it's like a whole bunch of like, looks like a whole bunch of branches. One second, I'm gonna show y'all what, it says here I'm gonna show y'all a picture of what that tree of life um, side looks like all right hold on she, she needs to clean the camera hold on one second all right there we go <laughs> someone's really trying it all right, so that is um, one side of the placenta, and the other side to this is smooth. So it doesn't look like, you know, a bunch of tree branches or anything like that. It's completely smooth. So, for example, if you were to get an NCLEX question or a nursing school question, and they showed you this picture, this side of the placenta, and they asked you to identify what side or what component of the placenta is, this is the part that looks like a tree of life. Okay, and that part is the fetal part, all right? It's also called the amnion, all right? 
on the NCLEX or on your nursing school exam, they may not say fetal part, quote unquote. They may say which, you know, they may say amnion. So you have to make sure you know that amnion, when they say amnion, they mean the fetal part. And that's the part that looks like a tree. That's the side that looks like a tree. The maternal part is the completely smooth side. All right. That is the decada, decadua, decadua. I don't know how to say it. But that's the smooth um, part of the placenta. And that's the part that goes for um, towards the maternal. And it's also called the decadua. All right. All right, hold on one second. Boop, boop, boop. I know this is about to get. Okay, cool. All right, next thing, make sure you go over fertilization and implantation. Like I told you guys, um, make sure you know the three parts of implantation, apposition, adhesion, and invasion. Um, and that's when the zygote goes to an embryo. And then, you know, after it goes to an actual embryo, that's when our fetal minds, uh, milestones start to take effect. All right. And you can start to feel slash get those fetal minds milestones as early as uh, four weeks. Okay. That's when um, those changes to the fetus really start to uh, take form. Um, and that's when people like get those apps. And it's like, what's going on this week during your you know, pregnancy or whatever the case may be. Um, hold on a second. Wait. For it. Hold on one second. Wait for it. I don't know how. Okay, sure, why not? Um, mm -mm -mm. So yes, as early as um, four weeks. I'm about to block y'all, seriously. Remove. Which one? Block and remove. Sorry, y'all. I'm so sorry. <laughs> now, how can I remove this person? All right. I'm so sorry about that, y'all. Trolls. Anyway, <laughs> um, within as far as those fetal milestones go, if you want to know the specific ones, make sure you just, like I said, go over from weeks four all the way to 40, okay? Um, check them out within the uh, maternity OB study kit. Okay, like I said, it, you can get it individually, you can get it in the third um, semester bundle or the ultimate nursing school bundle. All right, and that's going to tell you guys all the prominent and the important and the commonly tested fetal milestones that they like to hit. All right, um, now let's get into our pregnancy signs. All right, I, I um, posted a post about this earlier today, just in case you didn't see it. But that is um, where we're going to um, talk about our signs of pregnancy. Okay, now, did you guys know that there are like three categories and three types of pregnancy ty types or pregnancy signs? It's uh, They can be uh, presumptive signs. They all start with P's. Presumptive signs probable signs and positive signs okay now let me ask you guys uh actually let me let me ask y'all if y'all know y'all um pregnancy signs let me ask y'all with a question all right what better way to test it than a question hold on one second uh -uh. All right, 
Here we go. This is a question I want y'all to answer. Let me see where you guys are as far as knowing your pregnancy signs. See if y'all paid attention to that post. All right. It says the nurse is performing an assessment on a client who suspects that she is pregnant and is checking the client for probable signs of pregnancy. The nurse should assess for which probable signs of pregnancy. Select all that apply. All right. Now we know about select all that apply. Um, we know about select all that apply. That is, it can be as little as one of the answer choices listed here or as many as all five or six. Right now there are six. So it can be as many as all six, all right? Now, these are the signs that they listed. You gotta figure out, you gotta um, figure out which ones are probable signs, okay? Remember, presumptive, probable, and positive. Those are the three types of pregnancy signs. So which one's which? Belotment or belotament, Chadwick sign, uterine enlargement, positive pregnancy test, fetal heart rate detected by a non-electronic device, or outline of fetus via radiography or ultrasonography. If you was here last week for NCLEX Jeopardy, that's what... I actually, I do want y'all to answer just to make sure not that you remember the question. Just remember if you did get it wrong, remember the content and actually comprehend the content. All right. See the two that was here. <laughs> I think you two that were here were definitely, um, in last week's, uh, and clicks Jeopardy. That was like our, our intro, that was during our uh, pre-quiz, our live NCLEX Jeopardy pre-quiz to maternity. All right, so the correct answer, a lot of people are either saying three of the signs um, and missing You good? I just, I just wanna make sure I had a call. Let me actually, let me. Oh, sorry. All right, cool. Let me, I had to put that on airplane mode. Let's go to the, um, to the answer to this question. All right. So which of the following are probable signs of pregnancy? Let's see what our answer is. The answer is one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. No, NC Pink Rose, you second guessed yourself. It was four. <laughs> All right, so like I said, there are three types. One, two, no ma'am, one, two, three, and four are all um, probable, okay? So the probable signs of uh, pregnancy include uterine enlargement, Heger sign, uh, We'll get into that. Heger sign, Goodell sign, Chadwick sign, Blotment, Braxton Hicks contractions, and a positive pregnancy test for the presence of HCG, which is that hormone that's secreted from what organ? Where is HCG secreted from? Comment it right now. Where is the hormone HCD, HCG produced? Where is HCG produced? The placenta, exactly, great job. Um, now the positive signs of pregnancy. We can go ahead and go through that. All right, let me, let's go to my actual post. Okay, now let's kind of go through it one by one. These are our signs, right? This is the presumptive sign. Um, presumptive signs are subjective. Y'all know what subjective means, right? That means it's reported by the patient. It's per the patient. Another thing that's, um, subjective is pain, the vital sign pain. All right. That's not necessarily something that we can measure. Okay. Anything subjective, subjective data cannot be measured. All right. So presumptive signs are just like when you presume something, um, you don't have confirmation. You don't have really anything solid to go off of. It's like a hunch. 
okay? I, presumptive sign. What's a presumptive sign of like your man cheating on you? Like it's not something that you can catch him doing. Presumptive sign would be something like um, it just don't feel the same. Like <laughs> I just it just feels different. He's acting different towards me. All right. Now presumptive sign for pregnancy: nausea and vomiting, fatigue, tender breasts, and urinary frequency. Basically, anything that's a presumptive sign of pregnancy could be something that can be explained by something else. All right? A missed period. Are you pregnant or are you just really stressed? It's a presumptive sign. Now, a probable sign. Let's go into our next category. A probable sign is a little bit more specific or it's a little bit more um, telling than uh, presumptive signs, but not as like definitive as positive okay a probable sign is like you're pr you're probably pregnant but you need to go get that checked out all right it's an objective thing it's the opposite of subjective objective data can actually be measured it can be assessed it can be something that you know you you like i said measure or assess that can hint to definitely towards pregnancy but like we said it's not actually confirmed confirmed yet now this specific um list make sure you guys know these terms and these definitions because as far as my experience both personally and helping out like i said over twenty five thousand students get through their exams pass their anclexes and all that this is this sign and everything on this page is where you're going to get most of the questions from um like your NCLEX nursing school exams about these signs of pregnancy. Okay, they want to make sure that if you see these signs or if you if you um, see a description of these signs, you're able to identify a which sign it is or what it, how to assess it, as well as the fact that it's a probable sign. All right, so Chadwick sign, violent, violet, not violent, but violet appearance of the cervix. It's normally pink, but in pregnancy, as you have um, more blood flow going, that rush of blood flow, that increase or influx of blood is then, um, it's going to turn that cervix uh, violet. It's like a bluish violet appearance. Okay. Goodell, oh, another thing. How I remember Chadwick's sign, and that is the violet, violet appearance of cervix. Dang, I always... <laughs> Um, so when I think of it, this is how my brain works. And this is literally how I do any of my setting. Chadwick sign. I automatically, this is my train of thought. I automatically think of Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. All right. Chadwick Boseman played in Black Panther. Okay. Black Panther. This was like the cover, um, of Black Panther. Like this was like the color scheme, the theme, whatever, which is actually, um, what inspired the health assessment study kit that we have in the Ultimate Nursing School bundle and first semester bundle. But yes, Chadwick um, Bozeman, when I think of Chadwick sign and that violet purplish color, I think of the violet purplish color that's associated with Black Panther. And then I remember, that's how I make those two uh, connect. Next thing, Goodell sign. That is the softening of the cervix. Heger sign softening of the lower uterine segment um braxton hicks contractions all right that is basically false labor <laughs> um but it's not true contractions um blottement that is the rebounding of the fetus against the examiner's fingers on palpitation uh vivi said i think c c c c c chadwick's change in color of the cervix oh that was cute I almost said C squared. Uh, C, okay, squared is two, cubed is three. What's four? C, I don't know, whatever, C4. I like that. C, 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 C. C, 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 C. C, 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 C. All right. That, whichever way helps you remember, Chadwick's change in color of the cervix or the Chadwick Boseman Black Panther purple thing, <laughs> depending on how your mind works, okay? Thanks for that tip, love. Um, next probable sign, positive pregnancy test. All right. Now, a lot of people get that one confused. A lot of people think, oh, if you have a, pro a positive pregnancy test, then it, see quad. Thank you, little world. 
If you have a positive pregnancy test, it's confirmed. No, because even with a positive pregnancy test, you have false positives. You have, um, you know, especially when it's HCG, you can have a rise in HCG and not actually be pregnant. So remember, anything that's not positive, um, there's a chance that it can be explained by something else. There's a chance that this is the reason why. So if you have like a teratoma, y'all know what a teratoma is? Um, it's almost like you're giving birth to like a group of like cells that has like teeth. It's like a tumor with like teeth, hair, all this craziness. And sometimes when it, when it occurs in the, um, the, the uterus, it like actually grows, your uterus grows, that uterine enlargement. Um, and maybe you take a pregnancy test and that comes back positive. That was actually on an episode of Grey's Anatomy, which is why I tell y'all to make sure y'all study, y'all watch Grey's Anatomy because it's a great study tool. <laughs> but yes, that could be a reason behind the positive ACG. So that's why a positive pregnancy test is still probable and not confirmed. Okay, so make sure y'all know this screen. Um, and then our last bit of pregnancy signs. These are the absolute like definitive signs that you are pregnant okay these are diagnostic and um these like i said um are it's definitive confirmation yes you are pregnant ma'am okay that is visualization of the fetus usually via ultrasound um second one is the fetal heartbeat is auscultated all right auscultated is when you uh, hear something through a, um, the stethoscope uh, and then three is fetal movement palpated. Okay. All of these have something to do with directly with the fetus. Okay. There's nothing else that can explain you seeing a fetus, hearing a fetal heartbeat beat, or feeling a, a, a fetus move. Okay. That's, it's not a food baby. It's not because you had too many chalupas from Taco Bell. Okay. That is fetus, fetus, fetus. It is positive <laughs> this, this you are pregnant okay so there's only three of those positive signs and like i said um it has to do with the fetus hearing it seeing it feeling it okay um so those are the signs of pregnancy next thing that you definitely need to know <laughs> is GT pal that's what I call it GT pal this is how you obtain your obstetric history for women um all right usually you do it the, you, you should I don't actually don't I don't remember if you learning this during um physical assessment because it's a focused physical assessment um specifically of for women of childbearing age so you're not gonna ask GT pal to a nine-year-old please don't oh shit I hope you don't have to. Anyway, in normal in normal uh, uh, circumstances, okay. And now, what is GT Pal? Mm -mm -mm. All right, so GT Pal G stands for gravidity. Thank you. What does the P stand for? Well, no, sorry. What does the T stand for? <laughs> what the, we're talking about GTPAL, G-T-P-A-L. The G is for gravidity, which is the total number of pregnancies. Okay. The T stands for what? The T as in Tom. Yes, the P stands for preterm and the T stands for term. Thank you. All right. Now, when it comes to term, you're counting the number of full births. And by full births, I mean 38 weeks plus. OK, 38, 38 weeks plus. When they say, oh, you carried um, the baby to term, it means you carried to at least 38 weeks. All right. So full births are 38 plus weeks. Um, one thing that's really important is that they're um, they're they're assessing and they're talking about pregnancies okay not the number of children that was carried in the pregnancy this is very important because we had a, a question that was like 
the, the mom had twins or the mom had a triplet. And we thought, okay, that T would be, for twins, it would be two or for triplets, it'd be three. Absolutely not. We got that wrong. <laughs> we got that question wrong. All right. Those twins and or those triplets were born with that same pregnancy, that one pregnancy. So if uh, they were, the twins or uh, triplets or however many uh, babies <laughs> were carried to term to 38 weeks, that's still within that one pregnancy. So the T would be one pregnancy, even if they had twins or any type of multiples. Make sense? It's very important. Make sure y'all know that. Okay. Um, like we said, P is preterm. And preterm is, uh, when you think about that, you want to think about viability. All right. Um, preterm is 20 is between uh, when that pregnancy is viable and uh, actual term. So it's 20 to 37 weeks. That's when um, the fetus would be called. Well, that's when the baby will be termed preterm. If it's born 20 to 37 weeks. Okay. Uh, a, what is that A for? All right. And with the current Roe versus Wade, I don't know how many honest answers you're going to be getting. And I honestly don't know how that's going to affect the A and GT pal moving forward. I don't even know if we can even say that. Are they going to ban my life? But yes, the A is for abortion. Um, abortions, whether that is a spontaneous abortion, which is a miscarriage, or if it's a, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a purposeful abortion, like an actual abortion. Um, and that is before 20 weeks. Okay. Remember you cannot get an abortion if that, well, shit, let me not say that now, but a miscarriage slash abortion is before 20 weeks. Okay. Um, and then the L, what does the L stand for? Elective, thank you. Thank you, um, L, AK First Lady, elective abortions. Thank you. Um, so yes, whether elective or spontaneous, that is abortion slash miscarriage. Okay, and then L stands for live slash living. All right, that's um, how many births slash how many um, children that are actually living. Okay, now for this specific category or this specific letter in GTPAL, you count each child individually. Okay, so so let's say that we're still talking about, I'm sorry, <laughs> I need to grow up. But let's say we're still talking about that lady that had twins, right? That term would be one because it was still um, one birth, even though they, ha even though she had twins. But live births, how many times did she birth? <laughs> how many times did something come out of that uh, hoo ha? Two times, two times. It was the same session, but that process of actually bir birthing something two times. Two times you count that per child okay and that's for live births do not do not be insensitive or do not be like crap or cool and um yeah account like a like if someone had a miscarriage or if um a baby um passed during birth and um they still had to deliver vaginally, that does not count as a live birth, okay? That does not count as a live birth. Don't do that. <laughs> that, that, oh my God, sad, sad. I've seen that happen, sad. All right, so let's go ahead and have a little, um, um, I'm gonna test y'all really quick on GT Pal. If you need some help with GT Pal, I have a great little worksheet. Do I have that here? 
I always look to see if I have things print, like specific things printed out, and like I don't most of the time. Whatever. All right. This little worksheet right here. That's a great way to um, practice your GT pals. Okay, if you have the if you have it, if you have the um, maternity study kit, if you have this page, make sure, uh, print that out, pull it up, because we're about to get into it. One second. All right, I'm going to test y'all on it. Hold on one second. I'm about to test y'all on it right now. Mm -mm -mm. make sure if you guys are just getting in welcome welcome hello this is our live NCLEX maternity review we are covering the commonly tested concepts and topics within maternity slash OB all right I'm helping you guys cut out the fluff so you know what to study what to focus all your energy on especially if you want to pass okay Let's go ahead and get into maternity. All right. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Y'all ready? Y'all got your GTPAL? Thumbs up if you guys are ready for um, a practice or a mock obstetric history. You guys are going to tell me the GT pal. Thumbs up if you are ready. All right, I'm about to give you guys the obstetric history of a mock patient. You guys are going to have to tell me the GT pal. Are y'all ready? Pretty Green Eyes is ready. Pretty green eyes, the only person that's ready? All right, Vivi, you ready as well. All right, so here we go. The nurse is collecting data during an admission assessment of a client who is pregnant with twins. Didn't I, didn't I tell y'all? <laughs> y'all will get this? Okay, sorry. All right, the nurse is collecting data during an admission assessment of a client who is pregnant with twins. The client has a healthy five-year-old child who was delivered at 38 weeks and tells the nurse that she does not have a history of any type of abortion or fetal demise. Using GTPAL, what should the nurse document in the client's chart? All right, so let's go through that. GTPAL, let's go through it one by one. Let's start with the G. The G is the, um, the gravidity, right? What, what would the G be? And I'm gonna read, read it again. All right, we have a client who was pregnant with twins, has a healthy five-year-old child who was delivered at 38 weeks, and uh, never had any type of abortion or fetal demise. What is the G? The G is G2, absolutely. G is um, gravidity, which is the number of pregnancies, okay? She has a healthy five-year-old child, so obviously she was pregnant with um, that child, and she's currently pregnant with twins now, all right? Two, two babies in the, in the current pregnancy, but one pregnancy, all right? So G will be two. Remember, gravidity is pregnancies, all right? already um, birthed one she's pregnant now with the other one too all right uh next thing is t t is for term births so what would the t be all right remember uh term births are uh births born at term which is 37 weeks or longer this client is pregnant now with twins has and has a healthy five-year-old child who was delivered at 38 weeks so what is t T would be one. T would be one. 
Nope, nope. T would be one. Okay. Because the child was delivered at 38 weeks, that child was carried to term. She has one term child. All right, next thing. Uh, P. P is for preterm. What number would our preterm be? How many preterm births did she have? Pregnant with twins? And has a healthy five-year-old child who was born at 38 weeks. How many preterm births did she have? Zero. The P would be zero. Right, the P would be zero. Um, next thing, we said GTP, A. How many, uh, A stands for abortions. How many abortions did she have? What would A be? How many abortions did she have? Elective or otherwise, zero. Remember, she uh, the question literally says that she tells the nurse that she does not have a history of any type of abortion or fetal demise. Okay, um, so A would also be zero, and then the L, which is for um, living living children. What would the L be? What number would the L be? What number um, of living children does she have? Thank you, Valicia. Thank you, Pretty Green Eyes. Thank you, Leah, Miss Tracy. L1. So L would be one. One living child. Remember, she's currently pregnant with twins, which means she did not give birth to those two babies just yet. She's pregnant, but she did not give birth. All right. Um, and, but she has a healthy five-year-old child who was delivered at 38 weeks. So one five-year-old child. So it's going to be one. All right. So the answer for that um, and the way you're going to see it is um, if they're asking you to complete the whole GTPAL, it'll be G equals two, T equals one, P equals zero, or A equals zero. L equals one. That would be, that's how it would look. Okay, if they're asking you to calculate GT pal, that's how it will look. Okay, they may or may not take, um, give you all of this and then just ask you for one of them. Like they, they may just say, hey, using GT pal, how many live births did she have? Just how we did it one by one, they could do it like that. Or they may ask you to just give them the whole GT pal. But as long as you know what e how to get each one, you'll be good. Okay, um, so GT Pal. Let's do now. Let's go into um, Nigel's rule. All right. Can anybody tell me what Nigel's rule is? Do you guys know what Nigel's rule is? Nigel's rule. Uh, T Tina, I don't know what your term four is. Is it maternity? If it's if in ter term four you're learning um, maternity, then yes, yes. And that's whether you have an LPN program or RN program. I had to learn all this <laughs> as an LPN in my LPN program. I had to learn all this in like half the time. <laughs> so yes, you still have to learn that much um, to all this, and I haven't even gotten through everything these are just the main things that i definitely want to um touch on today um and we're going to end it with nigel's rule and then we're going to pick up um the other stuff tomorrow okay mm -mm -mm. That? i'm an lb that's fine <laughs> i was lp and i still had to learn it so you're gonna have to learn too um yes so nigel's rule is due date okay now when you see nigel nigel is this it's spelled like this. I don't want y'all going around thinking it's spelled like Nigel from the Wild Thornberries, because it's not. It's Nigel. Not Nigel. Boom. That's how you spell it. So Nigel's rule. This is how you calculate due date. Okay? 
Um, Vivi said last menstrual cycle date to add seven days, take away three months and verify the year to get the estimated due date. That's what EDD means. Estimated due date. All right. So now <laughs> I always pronounce it now when I read it. Now, as far as the, uh, that last menstrual cycle, this part's important because wording will throw you off. All right. What they're looking for is the first day of your last period, not the last day of your last period. Please do not get that mixed up. You will get that question wrong. First day of the last period. Okay, so well, they're going to ask you in two, two steps. One, no, they're really going to say, when's the first day of your last period? And sometimes you'll be like, um, I ended two days ago. When was the first day? First day. Okay. So it's your first day of the last period, minus three months, plus one year, and add seven days. Okay? A good way to remember, um, like a lot of people forget that add seven days part. A good way to remember to add seven days is that there's seven letters in Nigel. Okay, there's seven letters in Nigel. So first day of last period, minus three months, plus a whole year, plus seven days. Thank you so much. All right, so that's how you get Nigel's rule. Y'all got that? Y'all got that? Because I'm, I'm about to test you. First day of last period, minus three months plus a year then plus seven days okay all right so let's go ahead and and get into it child let's 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 um let's get some dates all right all right y'all ready Okay, it says, a client in the prenatal clinic asked the nurse about delivery date. The nurse uh, notes that the client's record indicates that the client began her last menzies on March 14th, 2021. Um, the menzies lasted for one week and ended March 14th, 2021. Using Nigel's rule, uh, the nurse should tell the client that her estimated date of delivery is what date? I'm going to read that again. Uh, her last menzies started on March 7th and ended on March 14th, 2021. Using Nigel's rule, when is her estimated due date? Using Nigel's rule, what is her estimated due date? If her last menzies started on March 7th and ended on March 14th, 2021, what is her estimated due date using Nigel's rule? Miss Tracy, you gotta give me a year. They're gonna want, when they say due date, they mean month, day, and year. And there's a, um, wait, hold on. Ooh. Okay. Let me see what y'all saying. Um, I'm seeing December 21st and December 14th. The answer is December 14th. December 14th, 2021. 2021. 2021. All right, so this is this is where we went. Remember, it's only it's nine months. <laughs> Pregnancy is nine months. But to help you guys like remember the due date, that's why we have the Nigel's rule. Now there is a a, a rule as far as like when to add a year, when not to add a year. Um 
Uh, hold on. One second. Wait, one second. It says change. Well, it says change you if necessary. Mm. Hold on. Oh yeah, change the year if necessary. Knowing that pregnancy is nine months, okay? So you would change that year if it's, I think after, and the time turned into, oh, I feel you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if it is after like March 31st, if the first date was like after March 31st, then I think you would add a year, okay? The first year, I mean, the first day of the last period, remember I said this, the day of the period started, um, of her last menstrual cycle started March 7th and ended March 14th. Started March 7th and ended uh, March 14th. That's why I said, please remember that they're asking for the first day of the last menses because they will give y'all both dates. <laughs> they will give y'all both dates to see if y'all are really comprehending and listening. Her period began on the 7th and it ended on the 14th. But to use Nigel's rule, you have to use that first day. Okay? Right. It's okay. It is okay. That's why I want to do that because, like I said, I would much rather y'all get it wrong with me during these lives so that when you actually have your exams, your quizzes, your NCLEX, you won't make these mistakes. Okay? Because sometimes all you hear is that last number, especially when it's lost in translation. That's why, uh, yeah. I said that's what I just said, March 7th, uh, March 14th first. Mm -mm, that's what I said like both times. All right, so yes. Um, where's the question? What, March 7th? March 7th through March 14th. March 14th, we don't need that information. That's literally, <laughs> they placed that there to get you got. <laughs> they placed that there to get you got. And it's, like I said, I think, oh shit, that scared the shit out of me. Oh shit. <laughs> that was something. That was something that totally just scared the shit out of me. Like a pop up. Oh my God. <sighs> anyway, um, March 7th, uh, 2021. All right, minus three months. So March 7th, that is what, 3 7? Minus three months, that would be. 12 7. Okay, so then that would be the year before. All right. 12 7 uh, 2020, because we went back three months. So that's where add a year comes in. So 12 7 2020, now we add a year. 12 7 2021. And then we add seven days. So 7 plus 7 is 14. 12 14 2021. Um, December 14, 2021. You got it? Got it. All right. Hold on one second. Now. I'm trying. Let's see. Let me see if I can um, get one more. I think that was it yeah I think that's it that's fine that is fine I'm gonna find some more for y'all um ooh. ooh so we're gonna continue um our maternity live we're gonna continue our part two um tomorrow all right, today I want to get through our basic maternity concept, especially that you're going to need um, in order to do uh, well and to pass your maternity course. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do these in parts just because it's um, a lot of information, but I want to get past at least that first part. I want to get um, past signs of pregnancy. I want to get into um, GT-PAL slash you know, your obstetric history. 
and then I wanted to get into Nigel's rule um, due date. This is stuff that we were supposed to do um, yesterday, but like I said, I got sick. But this is like your prenatal, um, your your prenatal stuff that you need to do your prenatal nursing. Um, tomorrow we're going to have part two. Okay, that's going to be actual. Um, it's gonna be pregnancy complications. Four stages of labor, fetal heart monitoring. Those are going to be the topics for tomorrow. Which I really wish I had found you when I was actually doing maternity. Oh, me too. All right. Did you um, hear what I said? Uh, she's Lex Rose. For tomorrow, we're going to be going over pregnancy complications, uh, four stages of labor, and fetal heart monitoring. Okay, that is going to be tomorrow. Tomorrow's what, Tuesday? Yes, that's gonna be for tomorrow. It's gonna be the 27th. Yes, they'll give us, um, they'll bring us back up to speed. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, perfect. All right, so tomorrow, like I said, remember, we are doing um, part two of our maternity review. We're gonna do that at Mm. yeah let's do it at seven we can do it at seven 7 p.m eastern standard so um because this is our last week of back to nursing school all right we're gonna resume um tease tuesday in october but like i said for now for this week we're really going to dive into maternity um and we're gonna do those lives we're gonna uh finish those lives with those reviews during that time do you have any cards for NCLEX? Um, I don't have cards, <laughs> but I have uh, study materials, study guides, study resources. Um, all my study resources are digital, but they're also printable. Okay, so once you download whatever it is uh, digitally, you can print out whatever it is for um, either the entire thing, or you can print it out section by section, or just print out the specific things you need. Um, but that's the great thing about digital. Once you get it once, once you buy it once, you have it for yourself for forever. All right. Um, make sure you guys, I have some announcements. So I want to make sure, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this live and then I'm gonna come back to start a new one. So I'm patiently waiting for, patiently waiting for my printed bundle in the mail. Girl is bomb. It is bomb. I will say that is definitely bomb. All right, so um, I'm about to leave this live and then open a new one to announce my um, my big announcements. But I did want you guys to um, just kind of give you guys a rundown for the rest of this week as far as the, um, the last week of Back to Nursing School. If you want to watch this replay, the replay of... Um, last or really last Thursday in all in in all of September's NCLEX Jeopardies uh, from weeks one two and three you definitely or well, one and two you definitely want to subscribe all right subscribe to my Instagram it is only two dollars and ninety nine cents to subscribe all right it's two ninety nine a month less than three less than that cup of coffee that you're going to get from Starbucks tomorrow and don't act like you're not <laughs> all right so it's less than that a whole month all right, you're going to get access to exclusive subscriber-only things such as these lives and these live replays, um, the NCLEX Jeopardy replays from earlier this month. Um, you're also going to get access to any, like, nursing, nurse life jobs, whether LPN or RN, but especially my LPN people. And you're going to also get um, exclusive NCLEX practice that other people won't get access to as well. But you'll only get access to that if you are a subscriber so make sure you subscribe for only $2.99 all right just click uh, uh tap subscribe in my profile all right and here's another thing everyone that subscribes um this week will get um will instantly get a 75 percent off discount code right after subscribing so that's my thank you for you guys for um subscribing you'll instantly get a 75% off discount code that you can use on any digital product, bundle, study kit, all that greatness. Okay? 
um, make sure you take your maternity pop quiz if you've registered for um, week four or if you're going into week four and then make sure you read the instructions on your homework assignment that is create a drug card slash study card or oh, drug card from your maternity meds. We'll also get into that and I'll show you guys the examples. But for now, let me get off here. If you want to hear my announcement, then stay tuned for like a minute <laughs> and then join me for my announcement live. Okay? All right. Thank y'all. See y'all next time. So tomorrow, 7 p.m. See y'all.